Welcome to virtual GED class. Today we're talking about perimeter and area with formulas. So um, this is our second class in the GED geometry uh, sequence. So if you haven't seen it already, um, you should check out the perimeter and area by definition um, a class that we did last week. Did you ladies get a chance to see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if you did, uh, you have an advantage. If not, it, it's not that big of a deal that they be sequential, but I'm going to touch a little bit on what we did uh, last week. So some students get mad at me. They say, well, if we can do it by definition, why bother to use formulas? I hate algebra. I hate the symbols. Why are you going to make me do this? Um, and uh, like it or not, the GED test is 55% algebra. Um, so at some point, we've got to get used to the symbols and... Um, there's uh, this is a really easy way to do so a uh, nice little easy dip in the water uh, for algebra um, so we're gonna be playing with that today and also this is just my little plug for the formula sheet uh, it is like a road map that tells you how to do half the problems on the GED uh, you know it'd be silly for someone to hand you a book of maps and you just throw it to the side and say never mind I'll just drive around lost like let's just learn how to use the maps that we've been given um, so we don't have to memorize everything okay so um, that's my plug um, so let's get started I'm going to start with a simple English uh, sentence here and this is based on what we did last class we actually learned to find the area of the rectangle last class. Um, so I know a couple of you guys said that you were able to look at that video. Do you remember how to find the area of a rectangle? Everyone's like, no, mm -mm, no, you said a lot of crap in that video. We can't remember any of it. Okay, so <laughs> to find the area of a rectangle, we learned that you could multiply together the two dimensions. Now, we didn't uh, give those particular dimensions a name. Uh, but I will call them the length and the width. Now, this is a great little concept to have memorized. If you know this, more power to you to find the area of a rectangle multiplied together, the length and the width. And that's wonderful if you have it memorized. But what if you're the student who's like, there is so much to remember for the GED test. I am never going to remember all this information. That's when the formula sheet comes in handy. Basically, the formula sheet, all it does is it um, gives us this exact statement, but in math symbols instead of English. So if I were going to see this on the GED formula sheet, I would see to find the area. So I would see an A for area of a rectangle. It says multiply together the length and the width. So to multiply the length and the width, I would just shove L and W really close together. And that's something to take note of if you don't know it. I hope you guys know that. But in algebra, to signify multiplying, we often just shove things really close together to say that they're multiplying. Okay. So who has, has anybody seen this formula before? Yeah. Wonderful. So um, I, it makes me laugh all the time. When people tell me, Kate, I don't use formulas, I hate formulas, I don't do this the algebraic way, I don't care if you remember that it's a formula or not. If you find the area of a rectangle, we're all doing the same thing, whether I use algebraic symbols or I use arithmetic symbols to do so. So today, we're going to practice using those algebra symbols because you have to be good at that language, like it or not. And so um, even if you feel like there's an easier way to do this problem, our goal today is not going to be just to find the answer, but also to practice the algebra. And so um, I'm going to be a little anal. In fact, this is the thing in the world I am most anal about. It is how you guys write an algebra class, because it really is a language of signs and symbols. And if you don't use the language properly, you have not communicated what you think you've communicated. Okay, just like with any language, Spanish or Greek, or the, the goal is to communicate. Okay, so not just to find the answer, but to communicate in my language. Can we agree that that's the goal today, ladies? Is that okay? Okay, then let's get started. So I did want to show you that little formula sheet real quick if you haven't seen it before. Now I got this one just by Googling on the internet GED formula sheet. So um, can you guys all see this formula sheet? 
-hmm. Notice up at the top what we have here. The very first section on our GED formula sheet is all our area formulas. Very next section, we see perimeter formulas. So for the first third of the sheet is all area and perimeter formulas so that you don't have to memorize what to do with all the different shapes on the GED. It's right there for you. Okay, so we're going to be looking at those formulas today and using many of them. I will not touch on circles today. I finally learned my life lesson. I've ta taught this enough semesters. We're just going to do circles all by itself next class. Okay. Uh, but besides that, we're going to look at all of them. So let's do some problems here. So number one says find the area of the shape below. So, so it's funny because I usually just assume that everybody knows their shapes, but as it turns out, that's not true. So humor me, guys. Number one, what kind of a shape is this? A rectangle. A rectangle. Thank you. Wonderful. So we've got a rectangle here. So, and I've been asked to find the area. So, um, you know, I would go straight to that area section right at the top of my GED formula sheet and go look for the area of the rectangle formula. I don't want you to have it memorized. I just want you to know how to find it. So in that area section, if you look it up, the area of a rectangle, you'll see area is equal to LW, and we just learned what that sucker means. Uh, to find the area, you're gonna multiply together the length and the width. I'm sure you ladies have uh, written papers in English class before. Using formulas really reminds me of writing a paper. Uh, Cause you know, our paper will usually have an introduction, a body and a conclusion. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. I want to see the same thing when you write with formulas. I want to see like an introduction. The introduction that you're going to use is you're going to just write down the formula. Notice there's no numbers in it yet. It's just straight up all the signs and symbols. It's straight off the formula sheet. I haven't plugged anything in yet. This is like starting uh, communicating to anybody who were to read your paper, here is a true thing that I'm going to start with. And if all mathematicians agree you started with something true, we can agree you got to a true ending. Um, and so that's why we start with that formula. This is a, a place we all agree. We all agree that the formulas work. Does that make sense, ladies? Yes. So do not move on or do not substitute without writing down that formula for me first. Another thing I want you to notice, the lazy mathematician will just give me a one-sided formula without an equal sign, without an A, they'll just write the LW down. You're gonna need to use this formula um, in different ways to find different variables on the GED test. So that would be an unwise way to go. Um, please don't be lazy, it's just a couple of symbols. Do make sure I see both the left and the right hand side of your formula, okay? And now we will plug in what we know. So hopefully you guys know that the L stands for length and the W stands for width. And students ask me all the time, which one's the length and which one's the width? It actually doesn't matter. The two dimensions on a rectangle happen to be interchangeable. It's not the same with all shapes, but there's our length and our width. So for our second step, we are just gonna go ahead and substitute those values in. So let's say that our length was 15 and our width is nine. Now, I have a lot of students who write this. So proud of themselves too, like 159. Okay, so I have an issue here. I hope that you guys can see what my issue is. But do you remember what I said when that L and that W are shoved together, what they're doing? Yeah, what are they doing? Two Multiply. letters are shoved together in algebra class. They right. are multiplying. Multiplying. So when you go to plug the numbers in, it's super important that you use some kind of a symbol so that I can know they're multiplying. Most frequently we use parentheses. So that is 15 times nine. So that's like the body of your writing. We call this the substitution step. And you don't have to have this language substitution memorized for the GED, but it just gets used so much in math class, you should know what we're talking about. So substitution, swapping out one thing for something equivalent. Now, I have a lot of students who put the number in and leave the letter, and it makes me giggle every time. 
because that's not what the word substitution means. I mean, think about it. If I had a substitute teacher in the class, the substitute teacher would come in, but I would not be there anymore. Okay, that's why I would have a substitute. So it's important that when you put the number in, you take the letter away. We're swapping one thing out for another. Okay, so, and now, of course, the final step is just to do the work implied, and notice I keep my A equals every time I'm speaking in complete mass sentences. And all your geometry on the GED has a calculator, so you can feel free to do your cal computations on your uh, calculator, and I get 135. This is my final answer, but something really important to note in geometry class it is not finished without a unit. So my question to you is 135, what? Well, if you watched the video for last class, then you know that area is always measured in square units. So it's 135 square meters. Now, if you are an English major and you like to spell, you could write out square meters. How do I know it's meters from right here, the abbreviation M? How do I know it's square? Because it's area. So you could write out square meters, but I'm way too friggin' lazy to do that. So I will write it like a mathematician writes it. We tend to write the abbreviation M and just throw a little two on that, and meaning those are actually square meters, not linear meters. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. Okay, super simple. So now not only am I finding area, I'm talking about it in the language of algebra, a language that it is necessary that you can speak and read in order to pass your test, okay? So next one says, find the perimeter of the shape below. And since it's a repeat shape, I guess we can tell that it's a rectangle. Now, people say to me all the time, Kate, Kate, do I have to use a formula for this? Uh, you told me to, how to find the perimeter last video. You told me just add up all the sides. No, you don't have to use a formula, but we need to build this skill in order for you to be able to do other problems on the GED. So if you know how to do it without a formula, by all means, go ahead and do it. The formula is what we use when we don't remember how to do it. Do you see what I'm saying? It's a roadmap. Okay, so we're going to practice using the formula here. So I need the right formula. Serenity, you said you had that sheet in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. Can you look up the formula for me for the perimeter of this kind of shape? It's a funky looking formula. What does it say? It says P equal 2L plus 2W. So now people say to me all the time, Kate, 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 this is a lie. This is not the way you find the perimeter. We find the perimeter by adding up all the sides. And I'm like, that's what it has us doing here. So what does this say? It says to find the perimeter, take two lengths. Well, yes, we have two lengths on this rectangle and add them together with two widths. We are adding up all the sides, even though we're talking about it a little differently. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. But when I go to plug in the formula, it's going to be super important uh, to use the symbols the way I see them. If you're using the formula, then use the formula. Okay. So I see a two in this formula. Don't change numbers. Okay. The only thing we substitute for is variables, letters. So I will swap out this letter L for the length of my rectangle. So what is the length of my rectangle, ladies? 15. 15 meters. And we'll remember that since that 2 and that L are shoved together, they're multiplying. So I'll put the 15 in parentheses. Now I won't change the plus sign and I won't change the 2. I'm just dropping things from above and dropping them down. But I will substitute out the variable. I'll trade out W for its known value. What do we know the width of the rectangle is? 9. 9. Beautiful. Now, a lot of people are like, Kate, you haven't taught me order of operations. How can I do this problem on my own? The, we're going to use our calculator today because if you had this problem on the GED, you would have your calculator. Now, the really nice thing is you can type this entire expression in exactly the way you see it into your TI-30XS, and it does the calculations for you. You can type 2 parentheses 15, close parentheses, plus 2 parentheses 9, close parentheses. And if you did, you would get 48. I highly suggest those of you who have a calculator practice this because people are not used to calculators with parentheses on them. <laughs> okay. 
So now the question is 48 what? So we talked about it again last class, but do remember that perimeter is measured in plain old linear units. So this will just be 48 meters, not square meters, meters. A perimeter is just a line that we're measuring, okay? And I am done. Again, I wrote out the formula, I substituted in the values, and then I gave my final answer. That is the least work you can get away with in algebra class. Some people have more steps where they show me all their math. I don't care about that so much. I care about those three things, just like intro, body, conclusion. I want to see your formula. I want to see your substitution. I want to see your final answer with unit. Let's check out number three. Number three says find the perimeter of the shape below. Find the perimeter. What is this shape below, ladies? Square. square. I absolutely agree. Somebody want to... Uh, give me some evidence. How do you know it's a square? What's a square All sides like? are equal. All sides are equal, exactly. And I wanted to use this geometry marking, so in case you saw it, you know what it means. I see how I have one little tick mark on each one of these sides. That's proof. That's a symbol that proves that those sides are equal. So uh, make a note to yourself if you've never seen that before. That's what that means. Now, some people are like, Kate, I know how to find the perimeter. I'll just add up all the sides. I'm glad. I'm glad you remember that. But if you don't remember that, we have the formula. So anybody, perimeter of a square formula, what does it say? P equals 4. Exactly. Define the perimeter. Take 4 times S. What do you think S stands for? Side. Exactly. That's the side length. Okay, so we are trying to find the perimeter, so P will stay P. I never move equal signs, I never change numbers, but I will substitute that variable S for its known value. What do we know the side length is? Seven. Seven. And because we are brilliant mathematicians who know that four shoved against S means multiplication, we will enclose our seven in parentheses. Now we'll do the math. Four times seven is 28. And 28 what? What would be an appropriate unit here? Inches. Plain old regular inches. Exactly. Not square inches because I'm measuring perimeter, which is a line. Is everybody cool with that? Yeah. Now, I wish that all the GED problems were as simple as the ones we're going to do today. Now, most of them are more complex. So this is just us touching the surface area of formulas, okay? We'll look at some more complex ones in the classes to come. But I do have a few more examples that have some tricks in them. So let's take a look. Looking at number four, once again, we see our little square here, but this time we've been told to find the area. So anybody, what is the area of a square formula? A equals S2. S2. And there's a way we say that. How do we usually talk about that little floating two? Squared. Square. This is how he gets his name, by the way, is from this formula. So A is equal to S squared. Okay, so um, once again, what we know here, area is what we're looking for. It's the mystery. So A will remain A. We don't change equal signs, but we know what S is. We know the side length. So we'll substitute S for its known value, seven. And we'll keep any operations or uh, numbers, and that's an operation right there to square S. Now, some of you guys know what seven squared is in your head. If that's you, congratulations. That's a good idea to have that memorized. But I also want you to know how to do this in your TI-30XS calculator. So to type seven squared, you first type your seven, and then you type the X squared button. Okay, so seven X squared, and then enter. And even if you didn't know what seven squared is, you would find out it was 49. Anybody have any questions about that? No. Good. So what would my unit here be if I was measuring area? Inches squared. Exactly. Square inches. Square inches. We measure area in square units. And again, if you don't know that, you might want to brush up on last class. And so I am too lazy to spell square inches, and so I abbreviate square inches like that using the inch abbreviation with the little floating two. Let's move into some more uh, complicated types of problems. So number five says find the area of the shape below. Now, some people are like, I don't know what kind of a shape that is. When I talk about the shape, it's the solid lines, not the dotted lines. So what kind of a shape is that, guys? Triangle. 
Yeah, exactly. Three-sided, it must be a triangle. So I am finding the area of the triangle. Somebody find that formula for me, please. A equals one half BH. One half BH. And notice those three things are shoved together, the half, the B, and the H. So they're all multiplying, one half of base times height. Um, and hopefully you guys know this, but if you don't take note of it, the word of in math class does mean the same as multiply. We often use this when multiplying with fractions or percents, but of means multiply. So one half of base times height. So we will plug in the information that we know. The B stands for base. The H stands for height. I am looking for my area. It's the mystery, so it remains an A. Keep my equal sign. Keep any numbers I have. Now students panic, I don't know how to do fractions. Don't worry, we're not doing fractions. <laughs> okay, now that half and that B are shoved together, meaning they, they're multiplying. So I'm gonna plug my base in here. So the base of a triangle is always one of its sides. The base here is always one of the sides. Now you might say, which side? The base is the side that makes a right angle with the length. So I always look for this kind of L shape with this little right angle. That's the proof that this is a perfect right angle. So look for that configuration when you're looking for the base and height of a triangle because they can try to throw extra numbers at you that you don't need, okay? So the base is the side that's at a right angle to the height. So this here is my base, this is 11 centimeters. That look good? Okay. Now my height. My height is not necessarily a part of my triangle. It measures the top to the base. And it's usually frequently a dotted line. Sometimes it's a part of the triangle, but how you can tell is it's at that right angle. So I can see my height here measuring from the top of the triangle to the base is six centimeters. So it wouldn't matter if they had a number here or a number here. None of those things are important. The only thing that's important is the base and the height. Okay, is that cool? Okay, and now, again, um, I would, if I was in a math class, I would talk to you about different ways to do this problem with taking half of something and all that. But since today we're practicing calculator work, I am just gonna plug this into my TI 30XS. So you can actually do one half in your calculator by typing one and then the fraction button, which looks like N over D and then two. So that's what I'm gonna do. One, the N over D button and then two. Now, depending on what mode you're in, this next step is a little different, but I'm just gonna have you guys right arrow just to make sure that you're out of the fraction. So that's what I do. And now I'll open up my parentheses and type 11, close parentheses, and open up another parentheses and type six, close parentheses. Now, could you be doing all this by hand? Yes, I hope that you can, but for now we are practicing our calculator and our formula sheet. So I get 33 when I type this in my calculator. Now the question is 33 what? Well, we were in centimeters and this is area, so it's gonna be 33 square centimeters. Is everybody cool with that? Let me see. Wonderful. Okay, now, uh, the next problem is actually a simple problem, but its formula looks super gross. So I wanted to get us a chance to get exposed to it. So I see, find the perimeter of the shape below. And hopefully you guys can see this is another three-sided shape. So this is obviously a triangle. And I've been asked to find its perimeter. Now, if you look up the formula for this one, perimeter of a triangle, it looks really funny. It says P equals S1. And you see this little one that's like on the bottom, that's called subscript. And you do read that as S1 plus S2 plus S3. So this is why when, uh, like the other problem, um, number four said A equals S squared, I said, you know, I corrected you to say squared instead of two because S2 looks like this, okay, with the two down on the bottom, 
Okay, that's known as subscript. So let's make a little note to ourselves so we know what subscript is used for in math. Good, good news. Subscript is not math you have to do. It is not an operation like squaring is. Subscript is just shorthand for talking about the ordinal numbers. Ordinal means like numbering. So like if you were standing in line and I asked you what position you were in in line, you would tell me your order. Like, so I would tell you like, oh, you're first in line or you're second in line, something like that. So that's what ordinal numbers mean. If I say S1, I'm saying the first side. S2 is the second side. S3 is the third side, etc. Okay, so it's not math to do, okay? And that's gonna be super important when we go to do our substitution step. So we're gonna take the first side and you might be saying to me, Kate, which one of those is the first side? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, okay guys? We'll call that one the first side. So the first side is eight. Notice I don't drop a little one down there. I was just looking for the first side. Okay, now the second side, sure, that'll be the second side. The second side is seven. And the third side is 10. And hopefully you can see that we know how to find the perimeter of a shape. It's add up all the sides. And what does this formula say to do? Add up the three sides of a triangle. Okay, so it's not like we're doing new math. We're just writing about it in the language of algebra. Okay, so you could do this math in your calculator and you would get 25. Now we're talking about perimeter. So it would be 25 plain old linear feet. Okay. Um, my got my hardest two questions coming up here and the only reason they're even hard is because people don't know necessarily what shape they are um so this one says find the area of the shape below and look at this funny shape kind of looks like a rectangle that fell over like maybe your builder was really bad at corners this is what it looks like every time i tried to build an ikea bookshelf <laughs> okay does anybody know what this shape is called Parallelogram? I don't know. It is a parallelogram. So it's a parallelogram. The way I can tell, um, a parallelogram is very similar to a rectangle. In fact, a rectangle is a type of parallelogram in that the opposite sides will be equal. So you can see that little marking there. These, uh, the right and left hand sides each have one slash on them, meaning they're congruent, they're equal. And then the top and bottom uh, both have two slashes on them, meaning they're congruent or equal. Um, they have the same number of slashes. So uh, that's one way a parallelogram is similar uh, to what we're used to calling a rectangle. But um, a rec whereas a rectangle always has 90 degree angles, a parallelogram doesn't have to have any particular angle measurement. And so that's why we see that kind of leaning rectangle look. Okay. So, if you look at your formula sheet, the area of a parallelogram is given as A equals B and H. And we've seen those letters B and H before, and they mean the same thing here. B stands for base, and H stands for height. And just like with a triangle, the base is always one of the sides. Now, you might be saying to me, which one of the sides? Well, again, just like with triangle, base and height always form that perfect right angle. So look for that right angle before you decide what the base and the height are. Does that make sense? And I can see it's making that perfect T. That's what tells me it's the base and the height there. Is everybody good with that? Okay, so the base is always one of the sides. So the base here is 12. And the height comes from the base up to the top of the shape, and so that height is seven. Okay, so easy enough now. I've substituted in. I can do my math in my TI. 12 times seven gives me 84. And 84 what? Well, we were measuring in millimeters, and this is area, so it'll be 84 square millimeters. Okay, hardest one I have today. Now, this one is challenging to students for a couple of reasons. Um, one, because they forget what the shape is, but two, because it is the most complex of these formulas that we're gonna be looking at today. Um, but anybody know what this shape is called? Trapezoid. Trapezoid, it's a trap. So a trapezoid is um, what's known as a quadrilateral. And this is the first time I'm using this 
uh, word in this video, even though we've actually seen a lot of quadrilaterals. Quadrilateral meaning four-sided. Okay. Now it has one pair of parallel bases. Okay, parallel meaning running in the same direction. Okay, so we see our parallel bases here. So four-sided with one pair of parallel bases, that is the definition here of a uh, trapezoid. Okay, um, unlike with our other shapes though, our other sides aren't necessarily parallel. So we are gonna find the area of this guy. Now, if you're to look up the area of a trap formula, it looks really gross. It says one half. And then, uh, oh, somebody look at their formula sheet since I don't have mine casting right now. Does the H come first or does the parentheses come first on this particular sheet? It actually doesn't matter. H. I just want to make sure the H comes first. So then they have an H and then they open up a parentheses and have B1 plus B2. This looks really complex to students. First, I just want to read it because usually if you can read it, you can do it. So to find the area, says I'm gonna take half of the height, take half of the height, and multiply that by the sum of the two bases. Does that make sense? Can you see that saying that? Okay. I'm gonna take half of the height, remember multiply can be said of, and multiply it by the sum of the two bases. Okay, great, so let's go ahead and do that. So, to find area, I'll keep my equal sign, I'll keep any numbers, but I will plug in a number for H. So anybody, any ideas, what's the height of this trapezoid? Absolutely, Josie says it's six. Josie's right, the height stretches, in this case, from base to base at a perfect right angle. So there's my height, it's six. Now, I'm supposed to add, I'm supposed to sum up my two bases. My bases are gonna be those parallel sides, the ones running in the same direction. Don't get distracted if there's numbers over here. We won't care about the slanty sides. We'll care about those uh, nice parallel bases. So that's nine plus 13. Is everybody good with that? Now, once again, if we had practiced the order of operations, I would do this math problem with you. Uh, but I'm practicing with my calculator today, so I'm just going to plug this entire thing into my calculator. So I will do one, the N over D button to make it a fraction, and then two. I will arrow out just to make sure that I'm not typing inside of my fraction. And then I will parentheses six, close parentheses, open up a parentheses, nine plus 13, close parentheses, and press enter. And you might be wondering like, why is she spending so much time talking about the calculator? Uh, because this is another tool that is only useful if you know how to use it and it is not like your phone calculator. And oh, strangely, I got 66. Again, apparently um, I give numbers that give the same kind of answers. Okay, so 66 is my answer here. And the question here is 66 what? Well, I was working in inches, and this is area, so it'd be 66 square inches. So this is pretty simple, right? The only thing, the only reason I even include this lesson is because most students need practice in using the language of algebra before I start using it algebraically. You might be like, what? I'm using algebra, but it's not algebraically? Well, later we're gonna see GED, more typical GED problems, where we have to not just compute numbers, but actually use these formulas with algebra and do what we call solving equations with them. So we're gonna build up to that. But for today, we need practice um, with these simpler versions, and we need to really build up those skills before we're gonna be able to deal with the more complex problems, such as are usually on the GED but I do highly recommend that you play with this because it's always easy when the GED teacher does it, dear goodness. Uh, but it's important that you guys get that muscle memory for this basic skill of plugging into uh, formulas and computing. So thank you ladies for joining me. I love not talking to myself and I'll see you next class.